Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, we'll talk about the pleasures of Bollywood today. They are not confined to viewing films. To borrow Ashish Rajadaksha's the definition of Bollywood, today Bollywood refers not only to the visual text of the film, but it includes all those practices centered on Bollywood which uh, like uh, fashions, uh, song, dance, food, dancing, all the practices uh, converging on Bollywood cinema that contribute to the pleasure of wa watching films. And this has been so right from the very beginning when uh, people went to watch films, particularly diasporic viewers went to watch films, not to watch the film per se, uh, but also to perform certain forms of sociality which reminded them of home. So the importance, the pleasures of uh, Bollywood film, films today uh, have extended to include other pleasures mainly that of seeing and dancing to Bollywood song and dance, but also uh, uh, lifestyles, fashions and even food. Let us look at some of these assemblages related to Bollywood cinema. I would be taking the case study of uh, one particular space, uh, mainly Singapore, since I have conducted my field work there to illustrate the forms of sociality produced by Bollywood films in the present context. And I am um, uh, indebted to this theoretical concept uh, construct I have used as delusion Guatri's notion of assemblage in their book A Thousand Plateaus, Capitalism and Schizophrenia, in which they talk, which they explain the idea of assemblage and show the main point to be taken here from here is uh, that the, the, the book is an assemblage today rather than because in a book there are lines of articulation and segmentarity, strata and territories, but also lines of flight, movements of deterritorialization and destratification. Comparative rates of flows on these lines produce phenomena of relative slowness and viscosity or on the contrary of acceleration and rupture. All these lines and measurable speeds constitutes an assemblage. So uh, I have quoted from Delusion Guatri to explain what assemblage means, how they define assemblage and um, we would look at Bollywood cinema as one such assemblage. Instead of the book, we look at film, uh, we look at the multiplicities of affects on various bodies, spaces and media produced by popular Hindi films in Singapore to the inter intersection of the intensities of the Bollywood film with other intensities and interviews were conducted for this in Singapore between 13th October. 2008 to 3rd August 2009 with male and female audience of all ages and nationalities and research was completed in between 2008 and 2009. So this is based on my own field work. So in uh, particularly re relevant in Delusion Gautry's description of the book as an assemblage is they emphasizing that it has no object but only itself in connection with other assemblages and in relation to other bodies without organs. They are suggesting that instead of asking what a book means, we will ask what it functions with. 
in connection with what other things. So instead of looking at what a film means in the context of cinema, uh, which is what we normally tend to do, we, we need to ask what it functions with in connection with what other things. Uh, does it does or does not transmit its intensities? In which other multiplicities its own are inserted and metamorphosed? And with ad what other bodies without organs it makes its own converge? So, what are the other things with which it functions? And we said that the forms of sociality, as in the case of uh, my friend in Tanzania who watched Mira Nam Joker 13 times. It was uh, the function that the film performed rather than the film itself, the forms of sociality it uh, performed in relation with the production of Indianness or Desiness in Tanzania, in connection with what other things such as food, such as uh, dressing ethnic. So, it is with these uh, other um, things the films uh, transmits or does not transmit transmit its intensities and the multiplicities in which its own are inserted. So, when we are looking at a film, we are looking at, at it in relation with, uh, with other assemblages such as the spaces within which they are inserted, such as the, uh, the bodies with which they intersect, with which they converge. So, these inter interrogate the referential function of films. The relationship between collective assemblages of enunciation and the func that function directly with machinic assemblages signals a break between regimes of science and their objects. So, we no longer confine the pleasures of watching Bollywood films because the reasons for watching them in the diasporas have been different, not in terms of its aesthetic merit, what a film means, uh, what, uh, what are its aesthetic uh, strengths and weaknesses, how are we to appreciate a film in terms of its aesthetic qualities, but what it does, what functions it performs, that becomes very important in the case of not only its transnational circulation, but also in the functions it produces for different groups of global uh, viewers and global fans of Bollywood films. Now, Deleuze and Guattari also have, have also interrogated the expectation that art should imitate a reality outside itself and substituted the search for origins or roots with the concept of the rhizome which ceaselessly establishes connections between semiotic chains organizations of power and circumstances relative to the arts, sciences and social struggles. So, let us look at the semiotic chains, the rhizomic movement between films and all other pleasures connected uh, with them that Bollywood films produce today in order to understand the pleasures of bo Bollywood films. And Charles Sop Sopchak asked, what have we as contemporary media theorists to do with such tactile, kinetic, resonant and sometimes tasteful experiences, descriptions of the film experience. We are not talking only about the pleasure of viewing a film, but also the tactile, the kinetic or even the tasteful experiences of the film going experience. Uh, those of us who have watched film in a theater, uh, when theater going was the mode preferred by most people. Uh, we recall with uh, nostalgically recall the forms of sociality they perform, uh, the entire environment that was created by the uh, by the so called uh, lumpen elements in theatres who would whistle, who would he uh, hoot, who would clap if they liked a particular part of the film or disliked a certain part of the film and that contributed the film uh, viewing experience. Now, uh, as most of us watch films in the privacy of our homes on DVDs or even on our laptops in the privacy of our bedroom, bedroom or uh, sitting room, that, uh, th that surrounding space which we had when we watched film, when film was a community, communal viewing experience has vanished, co uh, creating uh, making the film making ex film viewing experience very different from what it was in the past. And I found that in the diasporas, this 
tactile, kinetic and tasteful descriptions of film going still perform a very important role. Focusing on media as a contested pro production of sensation, Amit Rai argues that against such an approach as his focus on the body's effects modulated across these cultural and technological thresholds is committed to furthering ongoing explorations of the specific modes of address of fil Indian film genres as they articulate in feedback loop relations with active audience. So the film has no meaning on its, on its own. It's what meaning the audience construct of it, the forms of uh, the meanings that they make out of it, the, the functions to which the uh, audience appropriate these films are equally important in the film viewing experience today. How does with audiovisual technology circulate regimes of songs and songs and sounds, signs and sounds, sorry, signs and sounds, such that they seem to catch on to the very bodies of new globalized consumers? So I, uh, I will not go into the assemblage with the machinic assemblage because that's an another area altogether. But I'll confine myself to the forms of sociality produced by Bollywood films today. We have visited Jade Theatre and Cineplex in Singapore, and as we crossed the road and we climbed, we went up the escalator. The uh, as we approached the uh, Jade Theatre is a upmarket, upscale boutique called Rang Fab, which markets, which stocks the latest Bollywood theme merchandise. And very often, invariably, in fact, I have found as viewers uh, walk to the theater, walk down to the theater, particularly, particularly young women, as this merchandise is more female uh, attire, stopped pause to check out the merchandise on the way on the way down to the theater so the bollywood viewing experience is now implicated with the pleasures of not just watching the film but also of dressing like uh, one's fame ones the kind of uh, bollywood based uh, merchandise that circulates today for instance you have a poster of kalajkal here and you have uh, 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 outfits from the film worn by the star of the film being marketed, being stocked in this upmarket boutique where young women can dress in the manner their Bollywood, their favorite Bollywood stars dress and one can also choose the DVDs of, uh, uh, one can also buy accessories to match the outfits. But the most important aspect uh, in which uh, the of bo the Bollywood assemblage, the pleasures of Bollywood films, even before uh, the cult uh, for Bollywood films per, uh, themselves began in the West, it was Bollywood song and dance, the denigrated Bollywood song and dance, which was decried in earlier views of Bollywood as lowbrow commercial cinema. It's the song and dance which was the first to have one uh, audience in the Western world. And many who did not understand la the Indian languages or who could, uh, when the films, uh, DVDs of films were still not subtitled in, their in English or in their language, they could still participate in the pleasures of watching of dancing to Bollywood dances by performing, uh, uh, by emulating the dance movements of, of their Bollywood stars. And you can see that Bollywood music video itself creates this space, uh, uh, particularly in the song and dance uh, sequences, not only in the, mainly, uh, very often in the club sequences, we find the lead actors being surrounded by, uh, uh, we find the lead actors being surrounded by white dancers and that enables the white audience to insert themselves into the space of Bollywood cinema and also to actively p participate in the space of dance in, uh, of dance in clubs located in global cities all across the world. I take you to one such night in uh, Singapore, a Bollywood night in Singapore, 
which was hosted during the festive season of Diwali uh, in the in a very upmarket uh, uh, nightclub called Forb Forbidden City in the Clarkey area, and um, uh, the Bollywood Nights. Uh, this Bollywood Night was a Bhangra Kam Bollywood Night, which had. Uh, one of the very popular figures in Bollywood music in the on the Bhangra scene, namely a UK based music producer called Rishi Rich, who started his career with producing Bhangra albums and made his name through a through recording uh, Jay, Jay, uh, Jay Sean's iconic al album Mete Tere Naal Nachna, uh, but move up was uh, quickly appropriated by Bollywood filmmakers and many of his songs, many of the songs produced uh, by him have featured in, in, in a number of Bollywood films. And here we have him being accompanied by Veronica, the singer of one of uh, his, one of his sing vocalists, who also performed in a film called Hamtu. And the presence of Vin uh, Veronica on the dance floor in this club electrified the scene. And DJ uh, Rishi Rich himself is at the uh, turntable uh, sampling the music, and Veronica is dancing uh, to to his uh, to the to the tunes composed by him. And then we move on to a Bollywood uh, song uh, where people sing to Bollywood songs, but from Clark Key, which is a rather upmarket area in Singapore, I take you to. Circular Road, the club zone in Circular Road, which is something quite different from the earlier club and the nights, night which was held in uh, Forbidden City. In this club zone, we find a number of clubs, not just uh, an occasional uh, a live performer from usually from UK, but we have recorded music being performed in these clubs in the club zones. And uh, uh, the the club itself uh, somebody a blogger has reported that something wild and wonderful is happening in singapore it's getting a life a nightlife as the rest of the world knows that is forget coughing sw singapore slings what's far headier is the attitude of locals who are partying like never before at amazing clubs and lounge bars the, the few that caught my fancy are the Rupi Room, Daisy Own, Kulaba Club, Love the Name, and Bollywood Doom, fully filmy with gorgeous barkers from Mumbai. So as one enters the, uh, uh, cl uh, uh, the, the club zone, this is uh, a boat key as opposed to Clark Key, located at Circular Road, a five minutes walk from the Raffles MRT or Clark Key NEL station will bring you to this totally unique dimension of a fresh modern concept because this entire road is, um, la is lined by clubs named after uh, famous Bollywood films like Krish, Doom and so on. And I'll take you to one of these clubs which is called Doom. Established in 2002, Bollywood Doom as the name suggests exudes a celebrity -esque glitz and glitter of Bollywood and is the one pub that brings a Bollywood experience like no other. And across the road in this club zone, we have other clubs. So uh, just opposite whom is the club Kolaba, which is a more upmarket club. But one finds that the club is incidentally owned by the same person but it differs according to the clientele it gets. Club Kulaba is a more upscale club because the cover charge is uh, it's, uh, used by Singaporean youth. It's a lifestyle of the classes. The Singaporean youth usually frequent this club uh, to celebrate Bollywood nights on certain days of the uh, month. As you can say, see, this is during Christmas time and a lot of these nights are being uh, held. The cover charge is 15 uh, uh, on Wednesdays and on uh, Saturdays when you have a resident DJ or visiting DJ, the cover charge goes, goes up further. 
And because of this, it is able to maintain its exclusivity as the manager of the club pointed out to me that we do not have the riffraff coming in visiting our club because our club is largely for, uh, for the upmarket youth. We have a high cover charge and we restrict entry except to the youth who come here to entertain themselves on the weekend, youth from well heeled families and she emphasized the Sindhis and the Sikhs who form the more elite group of uh, old Indian diaspora in Singapore and it is this group which frequents Club Kolaba. As opposed to that we have Bollywood Thum uh, which is just across the road and which I understand is a kind of let us first look at Club Kulaba, Singapore's Indian fusion dance club which provides patrons a gateway into Mumbai's legendary nightlife. Nestled in the heart of the city, Boat Key, Club Kulaba brings you a spacious ambience fused with a contemporary decor and a dash of Indian ethnicity. Club Kulaba features live provocative male and female dancers. Be prepared to get hypnotized by the choreographed dance steps and alluring movements of our sensual dancers in traditional and western outfits. And uh, it also it is a lounge bar, so it has um, uh, it offers other pleasures such as professional bartenders who concoct authentic and inventive drinks to delight any palate. It is backed by an experienced and professional event management team. Club Kolaba can cater and accommodate any event customers, any event or customers choose to uh, event that customers choose to celebrate. So, this is from Club Kolaba's website. It invites you to come down and let its dancers seduce your senses with the experience of Mumbai's life, nightlife right here in Singapore. And we see different forms of sociality in Club Kolaba being performed. Uh, I would have to copy these and play them for you because they do not seem, seem to be playing from here. Uh, let me see if I can open it because I had some clips from here. So, here are the Sindhi and uh, Punjabi youth, uh, the manager said, who perform here, uh, who come here to uh, shake a leg on the weekends. Uh, the club Kolaba. Sindhi and Punjabi youth who frequent the club, you can meet them here. And Bollywood dancing in Dhum. So, as opposed to this Christmas party which was being held in Club Kolaba uh, on the New Year's Eve, uh, we have uh, these young people who have congregated outside Club Kolaba to enjoy the party. But if we move on to Dhum, it is a different world altogether because it is a different form of sociality we, which is being performed in Dhoom. In Bollywood Dhoom, you will step into a sensually exotic setting and layered with a slick sophisticated touch. This modern Indian theme establishment exudes the glamour and glitz of Bollywood with its trademark sensational music and exotic dancing. Bring your group of friends, buddies or even by yourself for a great evening to chill and unwind and prepare to be hypnotized by the rhythmic and graceful dance moves of beautiful dancers in traditional dresses, especially for flown in from mystic India. Now, I found out that these uh, dancers flown in from mystic India were actually a euphemism for uh, the so called dance bars in India. And when the dance bars shut down in Mumbai, all the dancers moved to Singapore and found a more respectable way of earning a living. Now, uh, I was I was led into Dhum by my enthusiastic Chinese intern who I had asked to uh, who had requested to cover the uh, Christmas Eve night. I had sent her to Club Kolaba to interview the manager and the early guests before I could reach there. But she had been more assiduous and before I arrived there, she was she told me in a very excited fashion that she had found not only Club Kolaba, but she had been she had been working hard and she discovered many more clubs 
doom, Chris, this is what she told me, prof, I, I found so many other clubs and I even went inside. Now, this young woman, an 18 year old young uh, student of NUS who was assisting me in my field work, uh, uh, led me <laughs> to the dance bar called Doom. Uh, it was her description which made me suspect that it was a dance bar, but I didn't quite realize until I uh, accompanied her, led by some Indians who invited me to go and check it out. Uh, when she said, oh, she went into Doom and she found beautiful Indian women in saris dancing and middle-aged middle men sitting in a row. Uh, my, um, I, I, be, I, I got extremely suspicious when I heard this description, but she was extremely excited that she could see beautiful girl, girls in beautiful saris dancing. In Bollywood Doom, you will step into a sensually exotic setting and layered with a slick, sophisticated touch. This modern theme, so this is what it calls itself, and you can see the, uh, the club goers outside. And we couldn't uh, take pictures. We can see it's a very hazy picture from the main arena. Garish interior, smoky surrounding, self-like 18-year-old swaying seductively to loud Bollywood music, wealthy men generously showering money on dancers. The sights and sounds are familiar, nearly identical. The setting is in that of a dance bar in Grant Road or Tardev, but of one in Singapore's upmarket entertainment district, Boat Key. While the moral police clamped down on the infamous hot, hot spots of Mumbai, dance bars have been thriving in this part of the world. Around 13 such bars have set up shop in Singapore, three in Malaysia and one in Jakarta, according to one report. And here we have the beautiful girls. Be prepared to be embraced by exotic dancers. They have flown in from India uh, and be entertained, dancing in beautiful saris. And the manager, the partner in Bollywood Dhoom says, we prefer to bring in girls from dance institutes and even ha ask for resumes to be sent in. Bar owners have a wide range to choose from and occasionally things get uncomfortable. Some, uh, sometimes mothers uh, urge us to select their daughters. So some owners know how this whole dance bar culture is organized in Singapore as, as opposed to India, where it's more informal and it's uh, a forbidden pleasure. Uh, I wanted you to, um, we, we have been to Bollywood Bhangra nights earlier and we've seen the kind of sociality that they see song and dance performs in diasporic settings. But there are many spaces of these uh, song and dance and different forms of sociality which are pr produced in alternative dance spaces. For instance, the difference between the dance space of Club Kulaba or the Rishidesh night, which had uh, uh, Singapore, uh, South Asian, largely South Asian, but also other Singaporean youth performing their Desi identity or their ethnic identity through dancing to Bhangra and to, to Bollywood music in on the Rishirish night and in Club Kulaba. Here we have a different form of sociality being produced, but not, but uh, very different from the kind of sociality that dance bars produce in Indian settings. I'll come to that in a minute. So these uh, young men outside Doom, and the so-called middle-aged uh, middle men sitting inside Doom. I would, uh, if I could, I'm sorry, I cannot play this. I'll have to copy them and play them to you to show that even though the dance that is performed is the same, uh, the, the, the pleasures that the dancers, the club goers go get after going to Doom is very different from the pleasures that a dance bar offers. I'll summarize what the Doom customers, who were largely uh, around the age of 30, 30 plus, they were not uh, middle-aged, but they were around 30, and most of them were uh, mid-level executives, young men who were working in Singapore, young Indian men working in Singapore and who didn't know what to do on their weekends. They, they would miss home. And most of them confided that 
the reason why they came to Bollywood uh, to do is uh, they came they came here to listen to Bollywood songs and dance and perform the kind of socia sociality that was possible in India, not in the regimented and regulated space of Singapore. So here they could let their hair down, they could do whatever they wanted, which they couldn't do in other spaces in Singapore. So it was not the uh, uh, titillating pleasures of the dance bar uh, that uh, that are condemned in India, but a very different forms of this feeling of home, just by listening to Bollywood songs and dance in an all male group, which brought these young executives together to the space of the dance bar. bar. And we conclude by the pleasures of food uh, by visiting a, a Bollywood based Bollywood theme restaurant in Suntec City, uh, which is called Bombay Cafe. It is uh, uh, this. This is there are several branches of this in Tanjung Kotong. This Bollywood theme restaurant is like a breath of fresh air. Says one of the uh, one of the customers. On the outset, this two-story shop house sports bowl colors a refreshing combination of pinkish purplish shade juxtaposed against the elegance of black, then come close and personal indoors with big names in Bollywood with the likes of old favorites like Amitabh Bachchan, Dharmendra and new favorites like Amir Khan, Amir Khan, Shah Rukh Khan and Kareena Kapoor. And true to its made in Bombay theme, this vegetarian restaurant serves an authentic and popular array of Bombay street side food. Just as segments of Bob Bombay Bollywood movies are shot overseas to titillate viewers, Bombay Cafe also prides itself on serving a fusion of Indian dishes incorporating Chinese, Western and local taste. The decor is, to put it mildly garish, the pink and the black theme was a bit too pink for my M's liking, but I did like the fact that they have screens showing Bollywood movies. Having read about Pani Puri on the Traveling Hungry Boys blog, it was something I definitely had to try. Well, except it's called Golgappa, six dollars plus 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 here, but it's really the same thing. So how the pleasures of watching Bollywood films art are articulated the, to the pleasures of uh, food in this Bollywood theme restaurant, because together they produce the feeling of home. And once again, I take you back to Jade because uh, as you appro as you enter the cineplex, you are uh, you have to find your way through this uh, food uh, food bar, which is called uh, Chart on the Road, and uh, it promises to sell you chart from Chami Chok to Chok to Chorangi. So before you enter the uh, the cineplex, you uh, you are confronted with the you are confronted with the olfactory pressure of Indian street food, which already prepares you for the film viewing experience. You can pick up a uh, pick up a ch chart on the on ch on a roll from here before uh, entering the cinema hall and have a grab a quick snack before you enter or on your way back you can pick up some food. And that creates your entire desi evening. You check out Bollywood fashions along the way and go back satisfied. Now, uh, this uh, pleasure of uh, watching Bollywood films is not restricted to spaces like Jade, but I found similar nights in Germany. And here's the Bombay Boogie Night with a white uh, dancer and some goris who were at the party. I'll quickly play a, a video from some of these parties before I conclude. Let me see if I can play the uh, links which are not, which don't seem to be playing earlier. Let's, okay. Let's go to Dhoom. <laughs> So the, the middle-aged men sitting on a stool uh, are not visible because we smuggled in the camera without, uh, without letting the owner see what we were smuggling in. And let's go to Club Kolaba now. <laughs>
you can see how the, the pleasure of uh, dancing to Bollywood films in one space is altogether different from that in another, uh, another dance space of Dome, where a woman is performing for the pleasure of middle-aged men. And um, um, uh, 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 what interested me was that when I watched the same uh, video in uh, the same song in, um, in Dome. You are Singaporean Indian, huh? yeah. so So this was a Club Kulaba and the DJ telling us the, how the idea of the Bollywood Nights emerged and who was dancing to Bollywood Nights in, uh, in these spaces. And now let's move to the 30 plus customers of uh, Doom to find out why do they come to these clubs. Uh, is it for the prurient pleasures of... So, uh, So as you can see that it's not the the the, the gangsters <laughs> and the middle-aged men who frequent dance bars in India, but 30 plus executives who are there just to produce the feeling of home. And I conclude with this dance space in Canada and the performance of the same of a similar song of a Bolly, Bollywood 
uh, dance in a party in Canada. Bollywood's pleasures are no longer confined to the pleasures of viewing films. They are articulated to several other pleasures, such as those of singing, dancing, of food, of fashions, in the way that Rajadhyaksha explained Bollywood cinema today, or the meaning of Bollywood today. 